All right, here we are again, another, oh, I mean, it's vaguely sunny. I was promised that it wouldn't rain today, but I still don't trust it. So we're going to go undercover here. I'm gonna try and rush through today because it's winter solstice pretty much. So it's like the shortest day of the year. So we don't have much light and as per usual, I tend to run out of light even on long summer days. So on winter solstice, I'm pretty much guaranteed to be working in blackness before long. Today we're trying to make cyclohexanone. So, no, what? No, we're not. Cyclopentanone. Yeah, look, we're rushing and I'm getting things wrong. And this is going to be the start of another very long organic synthesis project, which I tend to start and haven't really completed too many of them. And this one looks especially long and I probably won't finish it until I retire in 86 years. But, but I thought this video would still be interesting in isolation. So I'm not going to introduce the project. We're just going to do this synthesis. Hopefully this uh, end product of the cyclopentanone will keep for a long time. It looks like it's not that volatile, so it should keep for a long enough time for us to then get around to doing the next step. So how are we making the cyclopentanone? Well, we have here some magnesium stearate, and you might be asking, how the fuck is he turning magnesium stearate into cyclopentanone? That is a very good question. I have no idea how the fuck we're gonna turn magnesium stearate into cyclopentanone. I didn't even order magnesium stearate. Pretty much the only chemical that I've ordered in the last month or so has been adipic acid. So this must be adipic acid. Well, this is my adipic acid order shipment. So they've either labeled it magnesium stearate just to get around customs or something, or they They've just sent me the wrong uh, chemical, which either of them is probably just as likely. So first thing we have to do is actually open our package and see if it's actually the chemical we think it is before we can even start anything else. All right, that was the least exciting reveal ever. We just got a package inside the package that says adipic acid. I assume that that magnesium stearate, I think it's a food or a soap preservative. So it just clears customs easier than putting adipic acid. They probably would investigate the package more than just having a soap material. So it's just a, it's just a scam to, well, uh, is it a scam? I don't know. It's a scam that helps me out. Thanks China for helping my parcels clear customs. You do feel bad for a lot of suppliers from like, you know, locally in Australia that I really have to follow these rules exactly. Otherwise they get big, big fines. Very hard to compete with people who do the stuff like this. So this is a catalytic decarboxylation. I'm fairly sure those are the correct words. And we're following a synthesis from um, Tom's Lab, which if you don't know Tom's Lab is, is a very good channel. Very nice organic synthesis like this. So I'll, I'll link him in the description so you can check out Tom's Lab channel. And we're gonna be following it pretty much exactly, I, I believe, I mean, why not? It worked well for him, so maybe it will work well for us. And for that, we need barium hydroxide. And I'm fairly sure I have barium hydroxide. Should be somewhere around either... Oh, where did I... Oxides? No. Ba oh, there it is. Look at that. Bases sort of cupboard. Look at me go. I just like flexing that I can actually locate things. Tom's Lab does a 100 gram scale. We're going to do a 200 gram scale. So he does 100 grams of adipic acid and 5 grams of barium hydroxide. I like how I'm saying he does this, he does this. So if everything goes wrong, I can just be like, it was Tom's Lab. He did it. As if I somehow lack the ability to, to double check things. Uh, anyway, whatever. 200 grams of adipic acid and, and 10 grams of barium hydroxide. I think I've got enough of that. Yep, that's fine. Don't touch the poisons without the gloves. Set it up for simple distillation. I've started heating. There's some water coming off around the top here, and that's what we expect. We expect a bit of water to come off. I might change that flask later on, but we're gonna have to read it still, which is why I've got no nice head here. It's just that corner piece and no temperature control. We'll, uh, we'll work that out. Hold on, I should turn on that condenser water. Um, I need this one there. So this will probably need heating for uh, a little while, quite a few hours, potentially. The big concern is we don't want to sublime off too much adipic acid. We don't want it to clog, but we also don't want it to come over. If it's starting to come over, I can change this out for a different head, but I've just put this head in here for uh, efficiency. It's just a corner piece so we don't lose any like heat or have any reflux going on. We should just have our product just coming over. It'll probably be a little bit more contaminated than if I was using a nice head. Once again, we are redistilling it. So I'm going for efficiency here. We're fucking speed running this synthesis safely. All the adipic acid has melted, which of course it has, uh, because it has a melting point of 152. Let it go for a little while. Hopefully um, the stuff coming over is water, not uh, adipic acid, although it's getting a little cloudy here, so. Ah, I don't know, fuck it, it should be all right. It doesn't seem to be boiling very nicely, so I might chuck some fucking boiling stones in there, like rocks or something just to help that boil, because it doesn't look like it's 
Looks like it's on the verge of bumping. Okay, usually I blame the chemistry for uh, going yellow, but this time it was it was definitely me. It was a perfectly clear melt until I added some literal rocks into it, and uh, and then it turned yellow. So so the yellow here is due to me adding some rocks, <laughs> but shouldn't affect it. The yellow shouldn't come over. The yellow shouldn't spread, although it probably will, knowing me. It's uh, acting a little violent, and I think that's because it's the melt is like you know 180 degrees or something like that, and it's producing water. And if that water refluxes down and then hits that hot melt, then it's kind of flash boiling. Hopefully, it, it should calm down. You, you would hope. Otherwise, this is going to be one rocky distillation. Yeah, she'll be right. All right, I covered the flask in foil because everyone knows if you can't see the bad stuff happening, then it definitely just isn't happening. So. Um, good, we've stopped it now because I can't see it. It's a little concerning in there with stalactite, stalagmites. We maybe should run at a lower reaction temperature here in the pot so we have less acidic acid coming over, but that's some very summer solstice thinking. So we're going the winter solstice method where we go hard, just fuck things up, but quickly. I wasn't given this uh, distillation the time, love, and care it deserves. Went and spewed some acid over. Well, I think it's just been subliming it over, but the pot temperature probably got a little hot. Um, it's a little bit threatening how close this is to clogging. I probably should do something about this. Lord, oh lord, that's that's a that's a narrow point with a lot of bloody acid forced into it. So ah, there's a saying we have in chemistry. She'll be right. Damn miracle. We finished our distillation. Look at that. We've got actual product. It looks all good. All that's left in the flask here is a little bit of tar and delicious barium hydroxide. So that's looking great. I mean, that's great. That's an achievement in of itself. But really, the real miracle is it's still daylight. We still have like half an hour of sunlight left. So I might actually even pack this up without it going dark. Have I improved? Have I learned from my mistakes? Look, it's looking like it. Although, it's more likely to be just pure luck. Thank you, Tom's Lab. I haven't finished yet. I still have potential to crack everything and drop everything in the ground, so I won't make too much grand statements yet. We didn't clog it, although we came threateningly close. So, uh, there's some lost yield here with all the acid that came over, but hey, look, we're not taking away from the fact that we've sped run this enough that, that I don't have to <laughs> pack this up in the middle of the night, so... Um, you know, hey, hey, I'm taking my achievements where I can bloody well get them. So I've got two fractions here, and I say fractions, uh, but that implies that I had some sort of temperature control, and I didn't. I just thought I was having water over the, at the front here, and I just thought I'd switch out the flask, but, but on closer inspection, it looks like it's mostly cyclopentanone, with a little bit of uh, water at the bottom, which is collecting all that uh, powdered acid. I will combine these two, and then we'll, we'll have to do a lot of chemical cleanup, and then a redistillation. But hey, I can stop now, and actually have a... I've gone on about this too much, right? We get it, Tom. You managed to do one simple distillation in one day. All right, we get it. Okay, calm the fuck down. Here we are the next day, and we've got a lot of uh, acid crystallizing out here, which is fine. I mean, it's all lost yield. I wouldn't be surprised if all the water's been kind of sucked into that adipic acid there. Wow, this this sunbeam coming through is really bad. Winter is really not the best time for me to film for several issues. I mean, it gets wet, there's less sun, you know, it rains, it gets dark, but definitely the sun lining up with the entranceway of this door here, and I, if, even if I shut that door, then it leaves that gap at the top there. It makes it bad for filming these sunbeams all the way through. In, in summer, it doesn't line up so bad, so it doesn't like perfectly shine on these things. But anyway, sorry, I'm just griping about winter a lot in this video. There's still probably a lot of acid dissolved in here, so I'm just gonna have to do a base wash here in a separate 
laboratory funnel and then uh, dry it somewhat before our distillation. We really want to get as much acid out as we can chemically so that none of it comes over in the distillation. Alright, I added some distilled water just to wash out some of the acid initially and it's all formed one nice clean layer. So we either have one, everything that we've distilled over and collected is water, <laughs> which would be a very big disappointment and also very surprising. And the other option, which is far more likely, is that uh, the water is just dissolving in the psycho um, pentanone. I'm just forgetting the name of the compound every time that we're making. The water is dissolving in the cyclopentanone along with all the acid and everything like that. It's all just dissolving into one mix. So I've got some uh, sodium carbonate here and adding it should neutralize the acid but also force that water layer out. So usual practice is just a shake and vent now but there's no way I'm sealing this up with this much gas generation from so much acid. We're just going to let this sit for a little while and hopefully um, it sorts itself out. You can already see it's kind of look kind of oily but that's that water phase separating out. Yeah look at it go. See it phase separating out. So yes we're just going to let this go and I'm going to go have a, a, a cheese toasty. That sounds like a bloody a, a good step in this synthesis and feel like some bread and cheese you know. much liquid as we have left. I used a lot of uh, neutralizing solution. There's just a lot of acid. So much so that there's probably worth recovering that sodium a dip eight from uh, that solution. Then we can regenerate it back to a dipic acid and add it to the 300 grams we have left over. And uh, I'm just gonna run this through a simple distillation. If there's any acid left, well, there might even be still be some acid left. Um, that should stay in the pot because the, the pot temperature doesn't have to get too hot now because we only have to boil over the uh, cyclopentanone. I remember the name that time. Off. We've probably got as much as we can get out of there because it's getting really ugly there in the boiling flask And it's making my product turn ever so slightly yellow You can even see a little bit of a gradient see at the top there It's a little bit yellow So it's just starting to yellow up and tar up and, and come over and contaminate my beautiful product because, Yeah, oh, there's half there's fuck all in there, right? Yeah, no, that's that's cool product looks good So no complaints. Let's just weigh it determine a yield and um everybody gets to go home All right, so there's 54.8 grams and that's, I, I don't actually know what the percentage yield of that is, but I say it's kind of okay-ish. Um, I don't know where we lost a lot of the stuff. I think we did lose a bit of stuff in the neutralization. We lost a little bit of the distillation here. A lot of it came over with the water. I should have used my bloody fancier head. It's with a fractionating column, a little bit inbuilt. Would have had that separation between the water and the cyclopentanone uh, much more distinct. We don't need a particularly dry for our application anyway, so she'll be right. Anyway, we've turned what is basically a food preservative that's easily shipped from overseas into a, a flammable liquid. Thanks you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.